Churchill is persuaded that Phil can show that this is a war America should be fighting. If we're to capture the public imagination and their trust, we need a story to inspire a nation. Dunkirk. I first became involved in this film when someone sent me the novel. Um, it was an editor that I'd worked with um, when I was directing Stoned. The editor got to know me quite well and knew of my passion and love for cinema, and in particular British cinema. And he sent me the book to say, you will love this book. And uh, the book is about the making of a film, as you can imagine from the title, Their Finest Hour and a Half. It's about the making of a film during the Blitz and during the war, in primarily in um, London and Norfolk. Um, and whilst the book is very funny in parts, it's also quite moving. A shipwreck of a man. Sixties. Looks older. We all have a part to play in defeating him. Not this part, it's a corpse role. He's dead before the end of Act Three. She was an absolute ideal person to direct the film because we needed somebody who had a very, uh, very good, um, very good talent for bringing out comedy because it, it is very, very funny. And the scenes with Bill Nye playing Ambrose are hilarious. If all of this stopped, I'd miss it. I'd miss you. I hope audiences will be as entertained by this movie as audiences were in the 1940s when they went to the cinema. I hope they will have a great night of drama and I think there's tons of, tons of comedy in the film. It's very, very, very funny. Uh, it's very moving. There's a strong romantic uh, element in the film. It's really about Katrin and, and Buckley and their falling in love. It's about falling out of love um, and all those things. And I, I think in a way it's probably going to be the best old fashioned night in the movies you're gonna have for many, many years to come. I can mind smoking, I can't mind smoke. <laughs>